in this video, we're going to go to the River Kwai and Hellfire Pass. It's now 5.30, we are on our way to the meeting point for the Hellfire Pass tour. Okay, we've just uh, arrived here at the Chanaburi War Cemetery. This is our first stop on the trip. So we left uh, Bangkok around 7 o'clock. It's now 9.25 and we have our guide with us. The cemetery has over 60,000 POWs that, have, that are here, mostly Australia, New Zealand, from Holland, uh, the US, and England. Sorry, the other the nation from here was the Indian forces. Okay, this is the original train. We're at the, the Jeeth Museum. Just before we get onto the train at the, to go over the River Kwai. Uh, this is at the part of the original bridge in 1942, but it is built by the prisoner of war oh and the labor around the Asia. Had to pass it's 304 kilometers in the Thailand and 111 in the Thanbushaya of the Burma. Oh, okay, yeah. to get into the Burma, yeah. yeah. It's a, they have around 43 Japanese camps around here. And this one is a, one of 43 Japanese camps. This river is the name of this river is Kwai. Kwai. This is it's a usually Kwai. in the Thai language, it's Kwai, not Kwai. Kwai, yes. Kwai yeah. And, but it's a, the foreigner, is a... Kwai. Yeah. 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 So that, so that still, that's where the prison of war camp was, or one of the 43 was. And this original one was bombed. And then they built this one over here after the war. Yeah. Okay, got it. How many times is there a, there a prisoner of war that escaped from the Japanese camp? When the Japanese, they can catch them, they bring them to go to the prison like this. Yeah, it's that's so solitary special. confinement. You can see they have the money from the China, they have the money from the India. Like they that. stole all the money to yeah. fund their war effort, yeah. This is the original, it's a car, it's a death yeah. for the Thai people. Ah, oh, that's the... Yeah, we, we use the buffalo to move in this car. Oh, okay, that's, yeah. that's the same one of those, yeah. It's the original one that they use to transfer the prisoner of war from the jungle to go to the hospital. Because of malaria, yeah. So the remains of 104 people in there. Lots of different weapons and swords. I like the swords, the Japanese. It looks quite beautiful here, and, and the, row, the the river itself is, if you couldn't swim, you'd have problems getting across here if you're trying to escape. I'm sure the, uh, the prisoners wouldn't have thought it was so beautiful at the time. Prisoner of war camp is just a fleecing station nowadays. I'm sure that some of the stuff they're selling down there they would have liked in the day. Just going back, we come across the bridge. We're just going back. Is, uh, probably the only interesting thing on the other side, really, is just... Uh, just take in the the ambience. This was built after the after the Second World War with material from the Japanese. Funny enough, looking up now across the new bridge to the Chinese temple. Comes the train now. Ten forty it leaves on the dot. Ten forty on the dot. You get on the left hand side. We'll see how we. Oh, we've got a great seat. This one here is good. No, no, no. This is a gate. This one's better. Green, yeah. Oh, this is a clean one. Thank yeah, you. Usually, uh, there's a lot more tourists, so we're very lucky today because uh, we haven't got a rare, a big scramble on. There was a few people on the on the train, but we got on the left-hand side. Is what we wanted to do. With all the advice we've been. I mean, it's a pretty good train. It's, uh, I don't know. It's probably about 30 or 40 years old. It was just uh, hard old. It's air conditioned. It's got fans, and the windows are open. Train's now leaving at 10:43. It's about a one-hour trip to the next town. Nam Tok is the, the destination where we'll stop for lunch and then uh, from there we'll get on back on the, the minivan and go up to uh, Hillfire Pass. Back over to the Jeep Museum back there.
first part of the journey is through some pretty tough terrain. Figure collectors in military uniform. Just been told that these sleepers over here were the original sleepers that they used in the World War II. Very historic. Getting in this an area that's got some nice um, nice places there. River Quiet Cabin there. You can obviously stay on these. Wouldn't you? There's a lot of people taking photos out here. This would have been the most difficult area to get through now on the whole trip. Look at that up there. It's been hard to get through by hand. It's getting very tight in here now. All hand dug very tight in here now. Cave in there. The death railway. Can't say cave. Okay, this is a cave where there used to be the field hospital. Just a bend down here. Get down low. Going back outside the this cave was used as a field hospital by the prisoners of war during the Second World War and the building of the uh, of the railway. Looking back along the railway now, up through the cutting, across to the river. Would have been a lot of hard work there. Okay, this is Hellfire Pass Interpretive Centre. This is has been funded and built by the Australian Government and it's a, a interactive centre inside. We're going in to have a look now. For years, this place lay hidden by the jungle. But it was identified afresh in the 1980s. And since then, with the support of the Australian Government, has been restored as a place of memory and reflection. and now they've just issued as a, a little walking talking guide it's about an hour there and back there is no water it's quite hot to so just make sure you've got a hat on and sunscreen if you're coming here some places up and down so just be careful about that on top of the, the actual active trail back in the day this was actually the railway line yep. you can see the see the sleepers still it's quite peaceful here actually the trail itself is very well maintained quite wide and quite easily to walk along. Yeah, the interactive trail just it was carved out by the, the prisoners and the uh, the forced laborers following the track along along the side of the mountain where they actually carved it out of the side of the hill. This here is Konyu Kati. Definitely walking down in the middle of Hellfire Pass. Looking back at the start of Hellfire Pass. actually came here after the war to find uh, the war dead. The Japanese were meticulous in keeping records of all the, the dead so it made it a lot easier. Plus the prisoners themselves actually marked the graves which made it a little bit easier for them as well. They used what they call a gylo peg. They were looking for 10,601 graves in 1945 and they, they looked, they left Burma to come here to see if they could find as many as they could find. When they came here to find the graves, they only, they didn't find 52 graves. So out of the 10,606, they only couldn't find just over 50 graves. metres from the top to the bottom 
Yeah. You're just going through yeah. just stone. Yeah. You can imagine. You can just imagine how difficult it would be. So every Anzac Day they come here yeah, right. to this point here. This yeah. is where they hold the, the yeah. dawn service. It's like in uh, in Turkey, a place called Gallipoli. Every Anzac Day, thousands of Australians go there, and there's a place in France the same. And this is another place, this is the third kind of biggest area that they come, just at the top of the hill overlooking the cenotaph and the memorial to commemorate uh, the fallen and uh, you know, the, the, the valiant, valiant efforts from those prisoners of war that, that uh, built this and endure so much um, punishment and pain during the Second World War to build this railway. Just reading about uh, you know, Sawiri died on the 20 and 1993 and they brought his ashes back here in 1994 on Anzac Day. It's a very sorrow place. I, I feel quite emotional. Just walking back along Hellfire Path is a very sombre and humbling experience. It does make you proud of what the, these guys did, you know, in 1942, and what the sacrifices they made. It also makes me very proud that in Australia has has honoured them this way because it is a very important part of our history. That's the end of this video. If you've never been here, I recommend that you come. It's a wonderful place. It's really well done. Great history and something that you've got to see in your life. See you in the next one.